my name is Dylan and in this video we're going to learn how to use the cutaway shader to do an architectural uh, reveal. Uh, this could be for a small job or uh, it could be for a bigger job. It doesn't really matter, the uh, principles are both the same. This uh, project has taken around about three years of work in spare time and so I'd just like to thank a, a few people. Uh, Campbell Barton who is one of the core developers uh, in Blender and uh, but also answers uh, an awful lot of questions in Stack Overflow and other forum areas that I've found very helpful. Also uh, Michael Anders who has a, a great website uh, who writes open shader language code, OSL code and also Python code and uh, his site has been a, a great resource. Also Jimmy Gunawai who uh, runs the Blender Sushi site which is just <laughs> as you can see an incredible site uh, where you can uh, learn lots of things. I'd also like to thank uh, Lucas uh, Tonone, I hope I've pronounced your name correctly, uh, who uh, was probably one of the key developers for the custom nodes that are a, a core part of this add-on. And also uh, I'd like to thank uh, Larry Gritz for making OSL, the Open Shader Language, open and giving us a chance to use it. Okay, let's get on with the tutorial. To demonstrate this architectural reveal using the cutaway shader, I'm going to use this free model on BlendSwap by uh, Alva Hathasi. And uh, you can download it at this link here, and uh, there'll be a link at the bottom of this YouTube video. Uh, if you don't belong to BlendSwap, uh, you can sign up, it's free, and uh, there are some great uh, models on there. Uh, so if go ahead and download the model, and we can begin. If you've just opened up the file in Blender, it should look something like this. Uh, before we start adding the cutaway shadow, let's just do a few housekeeping tasks. We want to arrange our windows. I want to put a little uh, preview window up here. And I want to turn this uh, panel down here into a node editor. And uh, let's go Shift Z in this panel. That turns on the camera. Press the home key just to get the full zoom there. And I just want to change a few of the settings over here as well. If we scroll down and let's turn off square samples, uh, that'll help us a little bit. And that's all for the moment. So let's say in this architectural reveal, we would like just to reveal the whole structure. That's the building and all the furniture. And so the way that we can go about doing that is let's just uh, right click the sofa here. Uh, that'll bring up the nodes in the node panel. We want to add the cutaway shader that uh, you'll learn how to install in the last tutorial. So that's just Shift A and then choose Shader Effects, Cutaway Shader. And we're going to hook the output of the previous material for that sofa to the shader in. Let's just move these over a little bit so we can see. And we're going to shift, uh, connect the output of the cutaway shader to the material output. And instantly we can see our sofa has gone black. Uh, that's because we've got to do a couple of other things. We've got to enable the CPU plus OSL rendering. And uh, that's done. And we also want to add a cutaway plane. We want to add a cutaway plane. The cutaway plane will be added to the cursor position. So let's just set the cursor position above the house. Uh, let's click there, look down from the top in the middle. So that's about right. And now if we uh, go add cutaway plane, it'll add a plane uh, to that cursor position. Let's go into material mode here, and we can just, the plane's already selected, let's GZZ to shift it up. And you can see it's small, so we want to scale it up so that it covers the whole house. So we've scaled the plane up. And remember that the cutaway plane is going to cut away everything on the green side. Everything on the green is good to cut away and it's not going to cut away anything on the red side. And now if we use the uh, GZZ key just to drag that plane down after selecting the cutaway plane, you can see it's actually not really cutting away the house. It's cutting away parts of the sofa, okay? But it's not cutting away the rest of the house. Let's just bring it back up and we'll see that sofa start to appear. And the reason that's the case is because we've only applied the cutaway shader to the sofa's material node. Uh, now there are um, 
tens if not hundreds of objects in this scene uh, with many many materials so we don't want to have to add this by hand to actually to every object so there are some buttons on uh, the shader to help us with this we can add child nodes uh, to selected objects so let's go ahead and I'm just going to hit the Z key so we see it in wireframe mode let's hit the A key twice to select absolutely everything in the scene and we're going to deselect this white background here because we want to keep that intact so I'm going to shift right click it a couple of times to get rid of it uh, what I should have done there is pinned the sofa so let's go back and reselect the sofa and let's just pin pin that node in okay now I'm going to reselect everything again hold shift right click and deselect this white background plane and now we just simply press add child cutaway shader to selected objects which is add it's going to add this exact shader here with all its exact settings to the uh, to every object in the scene that'll it's going to take around about eight seconds or so as it goes through every object and every material for every, every object adding the cutaway shader for us now that's completed now if i click the cutaway shader uh, plane the cutaway plane and hit g z z to grab it down on its own z axis as i bring it down through the building now we can see that the building has been cut away it's that simple however if we keep going we're going to notice a couple of things the first thing that we notice is that there's a lot of black material here left and uh, what's going on here well, the reason for that is this shader is now cutting away every object that's uh, on the green side of this cutaway plane so that's everything up here uh, and it's making it transparent but if we go down here and check the light paths we can see that there's only a maximum of six transparency bounces and in many cases as the light is bouncing around it'll exceed six and it'll just shade it black or background color so if we set that number up to something like 30 we can see that that has uh, pretty much disappeared now if we hit gzz on our cutaway plane again and bring it back up through the model we can see that our model is now starting to reveal itself so it's that simple to do an architectural reveal and if we went uh, ahead and uh, hit that render setting now if I put this down to like 25% so it's not going to take too long and uh, let's render into a new window and uh, just go render we can see that our render is starting and we're getting the normal render as we expect and if I move the cutaway plane down say let's say halfway we're starting to cut away some of the furniture a bit maybe a little bit more a little bit more okay we've cut away a fair bit now we can render that and uh, you can see when it starts up uh, it is now cut away all those other items so this is it's quite simple to use in, in this respect if you're making an animation the next step would be as follows let's just um, put this in wireframe mode for the minute and this one as well you can set this timeline down to zero here let's just grab the plane down a bit let's add a keyframe to its uh, position so I'm insert a keyframe and let's insert um, uh, location and rotation and if we were going to do a 15 frame per second animation we could come down here and set the frame rate to 15 for example let's go 15 and uh, let's go ahead 15 frames and let's grab the cutaway shader up to the top here and let's see if we're looking in the preview that means we've we've gone from a, uh, a fully cut away state to a state where everything is showing and let's just add another keyframe there so I location rotation let's put that in preview so now if we play that we can see that the uh, that the cutaway plane is moving up and if we rendered out this animation uh, this would give us the full uh, re reveal effect now some of you guys may have noticed something uh, during this if I just put this back on preview again 
and uh, let's just move the cutaway shader down again to the bottom, move the plane down to the bottom. You probably have noticed, if you look closely, there are still a few very strange looking areas here. And this is a, this is quite a good model to, to demonstrate some of these effects. Uh, it, the, the reason that there's some sort of weird shadowing effect here is that there are actually two objects uh, in this model that don't have a, a material assigned to them. Uh, one is the speaker and the other two objects are these two pillows here. So they're pretty easy to add in. We can just select them. So let's select this, uh, this device down here and choose material. I'm just going to go new, just give it a blank material. And the same for these pillows here. Let's just go new, give it a, a random material and this pillow down here and we'll go new. Now if we select the, uh, this device and these two pillows and add them as child uh, nodes to this parent node, we should see that uh, it's adding them now, that those areas are now good. And let's just refresh our Let's just recut away down here, move our cutaway plane down to the bottom. I think it moved up because of the keyframing. So move it down to the bottom again. And now you can see everything is completely white. So that's it. Uh, it's that easy to uh, add a cutaway plane uh, or cutaway shader to your whole scene. So you can see it's quite easy to do an architectural reveal for your whole scene just with one cutaway shader cutting away what portions of the scene you would like. But let's say you want to do something a bit more complicated. For instance, reveal the walls of the house and then reveal the furniture of the house. So to do that, uh, we can add more than one cutaway shader to the scene. So let's uh, quickly do that now. And first of all, let's just delete everything we've done by uh, removing all the shaders, uh, removing the shader node that we added earlier, just by deleting all cutaway shader nodes. Now, uh, remember, this is an alpha release, so if you're working on your own models with this, I'd suggest just uh, working on a saved copy or another copy, uh, because if there are bugs that are going to occur, it usually occurs with these sort of adding child nodes, removing child nodes. So let's just remove all the child nodes and the parent node, and now there are no cutaway shaders left in the scene at all. So first of all, if I just put this into wireframe mode, Let's say we want to reveal this wall or just the structure of the house first. So I'm going to right click the wall and uh, let's just have a look at the material just, you know, in the node shader. And let's have a look over here. Now let's add the cutaway shader to the wall again. So shift A, shader effects, cutaway shader. We'll link it in as last time. Just reconnect this to the shader input and hook that to the shader output. Now we don't have to add a plane again because we already had a plane left from last time. It left the cutaway shader plane there. So I'm just going to pin this. So let's just select the last cutaway plane that we had. And if we went to cut away now, we might expect that the whole wall would cut away since we selected the wall. But you'll notice that the wall isn't cutting away. You'll find actually, actually just the floor is cut away. So this is quite a good model to uh, examine some of these things. And the, the reason for that is, if we look at the material for this wall, the, the floor and the wall and a, and a lot of other parts of this house are all on the same mesh, and the many materials added onto the same mesh. So we can actually just uh, use the parenting trick again. We've right-clicked the wall, and uh, we come down here and just add the add the child cutaway shader to the selected objects, which is the wall, but it's going to add it to all the materials here. So let's do that and it'll just take a second or so. Now, when we move the cutaway play down, plane down, we can see that it's clearly cutting away all of the house, uh, except the furniture. So the next step is to add another cutaway plane or cutaway shader just for the furniture objects. So to do that, first of all, we're going to select uh, one of the, just a random piece of furniture, set the sofa to make it the active object. And I want to select all other furniture objects in the scene, but there's quite a lot of them. So we can use some of these handy buttons over here on our, uh, on our parent shader to help us with this. So let's uh, get this, we'll just deselect everything. It'll leave this as the active object though. 
Let's select all the parent objects and all the child objects that are in the scene. They are currently to do with the house. Now let's select the inverse. So this is going to select every uh, every other object in the scene uh, except the walls. And remember, we don't want to cut away uh, this white floor here. So I'm just going to shift right click that plane. So now in our scene, we've got all the objects selected that would like to uh, to add a second cutaway shader on all the furniture object objects. So let's create up another node window there. We'll unpin it. And if I just hit the home button, and so we can highlight uh, what the active object is. And actually just to, I'm just going to make sure I'm, I'm going to make the sofa the active object. I'm just going to hit shift and then right click the sofa. And now that sofa is definitely the active object. Okay, so we're going to add a cutaway shader first to that sofa. So shift A, shader effects, cutaway shader. And let's stitch it in like we always do. Now, the next thing we want to do is uh, we want to, I think we want to parent all these objects in the scene. So at the moment, we've just added a new cutaway shader just for that sofa. But we want to add it to all these selected objects while we've still got them selected. So let's do that now. Let's just go down and add child cutaway shader to selected objects. It's going to copy this uh, new cutaway shader to all the selected objects. And it'll just take a few seconds to do that. So it has now done that. And we can see all our furniture has disappeared, kind of like we want. But we need to get some control over that. So we want to add a new cutaway plane. The cutaway plane is going to be added at the cursor position. So we can uh, just set our cursor position somewhere up in the middle here. It doesn't really matter too much where. And we can go add cutaway plane. And we can see that it has added a new plane for us. If we put it in material mode, we'll see. It's a bit hard to see. We can see here's the new one up here. So let's uh, let's scale that up too, so it covers the whole house. So we scale that up. Now, when we bring our cutaway plane number two down, I'm just going to pin this node up here, so I don't I don't lose this. The shader up here is to cut away furniture, and the shader down here is to cut away the house. So let's move plane number two down. We can see that's uh, that is what's currently selected, the furniture one. And let's move it down and let's see if it cuts away the furniture. And there we are. We can see the furniture is now cut away. And if we move down this top cutaway plane that we first put in here, this one cuts away the house. And so now we could add keyframes if we wanted to to this cutaway plane and reveal the house. Let's just do it by hand. Here's the house revealing. We can animate that as we did before. And then you'd add keyframes to the second cutaway plane and bring that up and reveal the furniture. So that's pretty easy too. Now, so far we've been moving the cutaway plane in the Z axis. Uh, if I move it down, we can see we can cut away our furniture again. And if I move it down, uh, this top plane here down, we can cut away the house again. But of course, we can also uh, cut away in other axes as well. So if I just look through the camera view along here, I've still got the plane selected. And if I go GXX to grab it along its x-axis, you can see that as I pull the plane this way, now we're getting the house revealing from a different direction. And of course, you can rotate this plane or move it in any way you want to. Another thing that we can look at on the, another one of the uh, features of the cutaway shader we can look at is, is blurring this edge. You find that when you do animations and you're cutting away cars or rockets or, or buildings, that sometimes these very straight edges can just look a bit too clinical and uh, a bit too, strangely enough, computer graphic -y, even though they're computer graphics. So we can blur that edge, and that's very easy to do. Let's just move this top window out of the way. This, this top one is for our furniture, and this bottom one here is for the house. So let's just uh, choose the edge fade distance. So we increase the distance up, and you can see that this edge is now starting to be blurred along the cutaway boundary. If I move the plane along, we can see that edge has got a nice little blur to it. 
and we can have it very whoops we can have it uh, very blurry or just a, just a little bit blurry there's another control as well so let's say you uh, we like this width a little bit but it's falling off a little bit too slowly we can increase the sharpness of the fall off so you can get quite a lot of control over that so we've showed some reveals uh, where we move the plane in the z-axis and we've showed some reveals where we've moved the plane in the x and y axis uh, let's look at one where we do a reveal from the center so if we move our new cutaway plane downwards uh, GZZ to move it on the normal to the plane. Now we're cutting away the whole house. Now, if we want to reveal the house from the center, you can imagine we might scale down our plane, uh, but all it's doing, as you can see, is cutting a hole in the floor, uh, which is what it's supposed to do. It's uh, if I just move away the furniture cutaway plane so it doesn't confuse us. You can see, we can just see the uh, the plane that's doing the cutting away here. This is the one for the house, and it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's cutting away everything on the green side. And uh, but you can see it's not really the effect if we want. If we scale up the side of it, it's actually cutting away more of the house. It's not revealing it. Uh, but what we can do, as you probably would have guessed, is we can hit this invert button, which uh, performs the inverse action. So now... It's cutting away everything on outside of the plane and leaving everything intact inside the plane, which is kind of what we want. So let's just move that more to the center. And we can scale it down to almost nothing until it disappears. And then as we bring it up, we can see uh, it's another option for revealing objects in your scene. You can sort of do it radially. Uh, in this case, it's kind of a recta, rectilinear radial growth. But what say we actually wanted to do it as a circle? Well, that's pretty easy. We just change the cutaway shape from rectangular to circular. And now, even though our plane looks like a rectangle in the scene, uh, the cutaway shader, all it really knows about this plane is where its center position is and its width scale and uh, its breadth scale. And uh, so we just tell it to use a circular cutaway algorithm instead. So now when we scale the plane uh, down, we can see it's a small dot and we can grow it up and we get this nice uh, reveal, which is what we wanted. And again, we can still use these edge fade effects if we think, oh, that's too sharp an edge. We just increase the fade off distance. We just increase that sharpen again. Just makes it look a little bit smoother. And, uh, and we can keyframe that again, just keyframe the scale move to somewhere else on your timeline, scale it up higher, add another keyframe again, location and scale, and then uh, do an animation and you'll get uh, the reveal as desired. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. I uh, hope to see you in the next one.